Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing separable polynomials. Okay, so we've now seen the definition of the derivative of a polynomial in a arbitrary ring of polynomials over some abstract field. What we're now going to use, uh, well, what we're now going to do is use this concept to actually uh, explore which polynomials are separable and which are not. Okay, so we're going to now see a really important theorem then concerning when a polynomial is going to have a root uh, of a multiplicity greater than 1. Okay, so theorem. So we're going to be working then with some polynomial from our ring of polynomials over the field capital F. So let's say we've got f of x here, which is just some polynomial from the ring of polynomials over the field capital F then the theorem is that this polynomial will have some multiple roots, okay, which we'll call alpha. So, of course, we can construct the splitting field for this polynomial, so we can construct the field extension um, k of f, which is the splitting field for this polynomial over f. Okay, and now what this theorem is going to say is that alpha let's say alpha is a root of this polynomial in the splitting field, alpha, which is an element of k, will be a multiple root, okay, will be a multiple root of the polynomial f of x, i.e. Uh, it will have multiplicity greater than uh, 1, so it will be a multiple root of the polynomial f of x, if and only if, okay, alpha is a root of the polynomial f of x at least once, okay, so it does have to be a root of f of x, so alpha is a root of f of x, i.e. if you evaluate f of x at alpha, you get zero, and it's going to be a root of the derivative of f of x, and a root of the derivative of f of x, i.e. if you evaluate the derivative of f of x at alpha, you also get zero. So that's the theorem that I now want to prove, that if alpha is a multiple root of the polynomial f of x, it's an equivalent statement to saying that alpha is a root of f of x and a root of the derivative of f of x. Okay, so we want to prove if and only if. So there's two parts to this. We need to prove the if and we need to prove the only if, and we're going to begin with the only if. Okay, so the way that we show only if is by proving that if the left-hand side here is true, the right-hand side is true, i.e. if we can prove that alpha being a multiple root of the polynomial f of x implies that alpha is a root of f of x and a root of the derivative of f of x, then uh, I can truly say that this statement is an only if statement, because this can, if this is true, it has to be the case that this is true, if we've shown this arrow here, and therefore the only way for this to be true is if this is true. If this weren't true, then this couldn't be true, because if this was true, it would imply that this was true, which is a contradiction. So I hope you understand why showing this arrow is equivalent to showing the only if portion here. So we're going to begin with that only if portion, the arrow this way. So, we're going to start off then with the assumption that alpha is a multiple root of the polynomial f of x. That means that over the field extension k, the splitting field for the polynomial f of x over f, that you can write f of x as being, let's say, x minus alpha to the power of at least 2 times, we'll have some other polynomial which we'll just call g of x here. Okay, so of course, it might be the case that if alpha is a multiple root, that it appears to an even higher power when you actually uh, split this polynomial down, but we don't need it to. It being a multiple root just means that at least we must have x minus alpha squared, okay? Uh, so in the splitting field, or rather over the splitting field, in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field, it will be possible for me to write f of x is equal to x minus alpha squared times some g of x, where g of x is another polynomial in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field, capital K. That is true if alpha is a multiple root uh, of the polynomial f of x. That's just the equivalent statement to this. Okay, what we now want to now prove is that alpha is a root of f of x, that's obvious, okay, uh, and the less obvious thing, which is that alpha is also a root of the derivative of f of x. 
So, as I say, alpha being a root of f of x is obvious. If I put in alpha here, of course, I'm going to get 0. If it's a multiple root of f of x, then it's, of course, a root of f of x. Um, what we do now need to prove is that the derivative of f of x has alpha as a root. So let's now just work out what the derivative of f of x is going to be. So we're going to now work out the derivative of f of x. So this is where we need to know the product rule for the derivative of a polynomial. Okay, so to work out the derivative of this then, uh, what we can do is firstly differentiate this portion, the x minus alpha squared, and there of course the best thing to do is just multiply it out, so write it instead as x squared minus 2 alpha x plus alpha squared, so we will differentiate that and then we'll multiply it by the undifferentiated g of x, and then we'll add this to x minus alpha squared undifferentiated times the derivative of g of x here. Okay, so that's just applying the product rule for working out the derivative of f of x, where we know that f of x can be written in this form. So all we now need to do is actually work out what the derivative of this is. We'll just apply the definition. We'll get that this is 2x minus, and then we'll get 2 alpha here for the derivative of this degree 1 term, and then the constant term will, of course, go. What we can then do is factor out the 2 here, and this will become 2x minus alpha, like so. Okay, so finally then, the derivative of f of x is going to become 2 times x minus alpha times g of x plus x minus alpha squared times the derivative of g of x, and this statement is still all being done in the splitting field k. Okay, so the derivative of the polynomial f of x is exactly the same whether you do it in the ring of polynomials over the field capital F, or if you do it in the ring of polynomials over k, because k is a field extension of f. But we want to do this in the um, Feel, well, in the splitting field, because uh, if we did it in f of x, we might not be able to factor it in this beautiful way, and factoring it in this beautiful way uh, is very helpful for us being able to conclude that alpha is a root of the derivative. Okay, so quite clearly, if you substitute alpha in there, if you evaluate this derivative at alpha, you're going to get uh, this bit becoming zero, because you'll get alpha minus alpha here, so you'll multiply this bit by zero, and when you evaluate this bit, as alpha, you'll also get zero. So overall, the derivative of the polynomial evaluated at alpha will be zero, and that means that alpha is a root of the derivative. So the only if portion is now shown. If alpha is a multiple root of the polynomial f of x, then we now know that alpha is indeed a root of f of x and a root of the derivative of f x. So if this is true, this has to also be true. So the only way for this to be true is if this is true, because if this isn't true, this cannot be true, uh, because if this was true, it would imply this was true, as we've just shown. Okay, we now want to do the if portion, and the if portion is the opposite arrow. It's the arrow this way round. It's showing that if this is true, it implies that this is true. Okay, so if it's true that alpha is a root of f of x, and alpha is a root of the derivative of f of x, then we want to show that it's also true that alpha is going to be a multiple root of f of x. Oh, and I just want to stress something before we actually go any further uh, about what we've just done. Uh, we have just shown that indeed alpha will be a root of the derivative of this polynomial if alpha is a multiple root of the polynomial. I want to stress that that will be true even if this derivative is equal to zero. So we've seen that if we're working in some odd fields where the characteristic of the field is a prime number, then derivatives can be very strange. So it might be the case that although this polynomial is huge, the derivative might end up being zero. Now, the d zero, uh, if you evaluate that at alpha, you do get zero. So in a way, anything is a root of zero. Okay, so if it's the case that you do in fact get the derivative is equal to zero, then you can still conclude that, uh, yes, uh, alpha is a root of the derivative. Okay, so that's just something to point out, that the derivative might well end up being zero. Okay, what we've shown is that it will always equal this. Whether all of this sums to give you the zero polynomial or not, you can always see that it will uh, have alpha as a root. When you evaluate it at alpha, uh, you will always get zero. Okay, but be aware that the derivative of the polynomial might end up being zero if we're working in a strange uh, field. 
Okay, right, now let's go on to the if portion. So we're going to assume that alpha is a root of f of x and a root of the derivative of f of x. So that means that we can write f of x initially as x minus alpha times h of x. Okay, so in the splitting field, again, this is a statement that we can write over the splitting field, in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field. If alpha is a root of f of x, then I can write f of x as x minus alpha times h of x. Okay, so I'm first using that first line, which is that alpha is a root of f of x. Okay, now let me apply the second line. Now, if I know the second line is true, then I can take the derivative of f of x here, okay? And I know that alpha must be a root of this. So let's firstly work this out from this line here. So just applying the product rule, take the derivative of this, it's 1. So we'll get just times 1 times h of x. Uh, then we'll have plus x minus alpha undifferentiated times the, and I shouldn't say differentiated, times the derivative, the derivative of, uh, sorry, x minus alpha, not the derivative of that, times uh, the derivative of h of x. I apologize for continuously saying differentiated, it's just force of habit. Okay, right, uh, so here then is the derivative of f of x. It's equal to h of x plus x minus alpha times the derivative of h of x. Now, we know that if we evaluate this at alpha, we must get zero because that's one of the things we're initially assuming, that alpha is a root of the derivative. So if we evaluate the derivative at alpha we must get zero, but this evaluated at alpha is just going to be this evaluated at alpha, and of course this evaluated at alpha is just h of x evaluated at alpha, because when we evaluate this portion at alpha, we'll just be multiplying by zero here, so all of this bit will vanish. So the derivative of f of x evaluated at alpha is just going to be h of alpha, and we know that that is going to have to equal zero. Okay, so that now tells me that alpha is a root of this polynomial h of x, and therefore that I can write h of x in the splitting field for f of x again as x minus alpha times some h bar of x, which is just some other polynomial in the splitting field, or rather over the splitting field, in the ring of polynomials over the splitting field. I can then substitute this in to this expression up here, and I'll get that f of x is equal to x minus alpha squared times h bar of x. So this will become x minus alpha squared times h bar of x, like so. And of course, that now means that f of x is indeed, uh, does indeed have alpha as a multiple root. Alpha is a multiple root of f of x. So indeed, we've shown that if alpha is a root of f of x and a root of the derivative of f of x, uh, then it implies that alpha is a multiple root of your polynomial f of x. Okay, right, so that is a useful way then for characterizing uh, when a polynomial indeed has a multiple root. Okay, and we'll take this further uh, in the next video.